chapter 4. John Marie Awiyaha. So that's the French pronunciation of uh, Richer, Wiser, Happier, Chapter 4, The Core Person, John Marie Awiyaha. I'm going to call him JME because I'm going to stumble up his uh, name otherwise. So he's the portrait of a resilient investor. So we have done and covered Monish Pabrai. We have covered uh, uh, in, in chapter one. In chapter two, we've covered uh, Sir John Templeton. In chapter three, we covered Howard Marks. And now we're going to go into John Marie Aviya, JME, the resilient investor. So what do we learn from him? So he was a society general and, and most recently at uh, First Eagle Global Fund. And his key insight uh, for us is winning happens when you're not losing. And winning happens when you're staying in the game. So the more you can stay in the game, the more you're winning. That is deep, deep. Think about Warren Buffett for a moment. He's like 80 plus years, Charlie Munger 90 plus years, right? They're in the game for like 60 years plus in investment, maybe 80 years, 6, 70, 80 years in investments. So if you, if you are in the game, you're compounding for a long period of time. So staying in the game is important. So what does that mean? This means a lot. How you take care of yourself, your health, how you let the money compound, not touch it for a long period of time. Those are the insights. That's what makes you resilient. That's what gets the power of compounding behind you. Right? So lots to learn from John Mari Avayaha. So let's uh, let's get into it. Right? And so how do you be resilient? You be resilient by diversification. Chapter three, Howard Marks taught us, right? Everything changes. And so we need a margin of safety for every investment decision that we make. We need to diversify. And so the the biggest learning here is it's not important just to build your investment portfolio to a large level, but it's also important to keep it, meaning you don't want to lose it after you built it. So diversification helps you keep the fortune that you have built. And so when you do that, you don't necessarily participate in those hyper optimisms like the tech bubble in the 99, uh, tech dot com boom, right? And he didn't participate. He lost a lot of clients when he was in uh, Society General. And but he stayed and uh, he stayed convinced that this is not the right thing, so he stayed out. And so while he was out in 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, he actually like way beat the market by 49, 31, and 42%. So it's important to stay in the game for the long run. And so that means you would have to take your positions out and not participate in the euphoria that exists and happens all the time in the cycles. And there's this really good quote, many shall be restored that now are fallen and many shall fall that now are in honor, right? That's in the, ch in the chapter. So if we think about fragility, it comes through multiple facets. So each of those facets, if you replace, you can actually build resilience through the opposites of all of those facets. So if fragility comes multifaceted, resilience comes multifaceted as well. So if you don't have the right amount of cash balance, you should build the cash balance for that downturn so that you can put in that you don't have to sell your investment. And you should be ready when your shareholders are redeeming in emergency. You need to, uh, you should, you don't need to, you shouldn't as an investor need to redeem funds because there's an emergency, you should have an emergency fund, which is separate than your cash balance. You shouldn't be investing in poor quality, poor management firms, you should invest in high quality stocks. You shouldn't invest in high volatile, high debt companies, 
invest in low debt and stabler higher earnings companies right so each of those areas that can be fragile you replace that with opposite and you get highly resilient investment portfolio so that's the key insight and like warren buffett he said once i think that thou shall not depend on the kindness of others which basically says you don't want to be in times when you have a really high portfolio of investment but then you depend on someone's kindness to save you because of some financial distress or some emergency that happened there could be you, you know if let's say you don't have insurance and you have a huge medical emergency that's a problem so you should be first covered for that if if you lose your job and you don't have enough money to recover or get another job then you have going to sell your investment that's a problem so and now then you depend on other people so you shouldn't depend on um that and so that's why Warren Buffett keeps like 150 plus billion dollars in cash and he says 50 billion would always be there to support the insurance business needs and others right so don't rush to get rich play the long game that's the key expect reasonable returns but play it over a long period of time so that's the new learning from from John Murray over yeah right and so investing is more about perseverance than anything else and then your your habits how much do you trade i personally noticed that my investment returns are indirectly proportional to the trading activity so if i trade more my investment returns are actually very poor <laughs> but if i trade less investment returns are really good so keep majority of your portfolio where you don't touch in high quality companies and 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 you need to know like what are your goals right so if a ship is sailing to a port and does not know which port the ship is sailing to then no wind is favorable likewise if you don't know your goals then or you don't know yourself or your temperament or what you're made up of independent of what investment style you follow none of them will help you so you need to know yourself your temperament and invest so that you can invest for the long run are you able to sleep well with the investments that you have if not you should reconsider are you diversified enough or are you concentrated too much stay for the long run and the way you can do a litmus test very quickly if you are invested well is imagine tomorrow the stock market stops reporting or functioning even for 6 months how anxious would you be of your investments right if you are anxious that means you don't have the right investment it's a trading bet it's not an investment and there will be times where the stock market keeps going up like 1908 to um 1911 it was up and down up and down from 1912 to 1945 it was constantly up from 45 to 66 and now it's been constantly up since 2008 to 2021 now right so so there will be these cycles so you need to be prepared for it and predicting when it will end is again very hard this is the third time we are hearing this that predicting when the stock market music will end is hard but it's important to know that it will end and so when it ends surviving those dips and then going through those high level of volatility is important to stay in the game for the long run right and he says simpler mundane investing is better than glamorous this following the fad following the disruption like simple things like what are the key products that are needed what are the companies that have a predictable earnings whose products are getting better and better market share so there's simpler such rules that you can follow and stay with it for a long period of time and and if you invest in those companies that enable other companies like investing in a uh, a tool that's used by the restaurant versus investing in restaurant then you'll be better off if you invest in tool makers rather than tool users right so because restaurants come and go but those all restaurants will need the same cooking tools if you invest in the cooking tool company then you are better off and so he says 70% stock 15% cash and 15% gold and so he's he's doing that 30% uh 
uh, not in stock primarily to hedge against inflation, hedge against emergencies, hedge against downturn so that you can invest more into it. So percentage allocation, you get a really good tip here on importance of gold as a hedge. And percentage of cash, you need enough cash to work when it is fully sold out market. So you want to be having enough cash so that you can invest in those lowest downturns. So that's the key here. And, and you have enough to stay in the game for a long period, right? Again, remember he shared with us 1912 to 1945. So that's close to like 33 years where it was constantly up and down market, went nowhere, right? So you need good amount of cash, 20, 30 years sometimes. If the bull market is going on for the last 13 plus years, you can expect it to be unstable for 13 years as well, right? So prepare for it. And so the way you do that is by risk mitigation. If you only have one bank, and if that bank goes under, you know, you have FDIC in the United States and you have bank coverage and others, you want more than one bank. If you have one broker, you need more than one broker. If you have one portfolio managed service, you need more than one portfolio managed service. If you're investing in one country, you should invest in two countries or three countries. If you have one currency where you're all of your assets, you should have in two or three assets and currencies. If you have one fund, you should probably do two or three funds. So diversify. That's the key. Diversify, invest for the long run, and in and staying in the game is the biggest learning that we learned from John Maria Vaya, right? And uh, investing is by not losing and staying in the game, right? And he gives us really good insights around how to do portfolio allocation, how to make sure that we replace fragility with anti-fragility and how we can become a resilient investor. So that is chapter four, John Murray Elia.